Just before dawn this morning, the FBI raided the Florida home of longtime Trump advisor Roger Stone. will be joining us in a minute. The CNN producer stood across the street recording it all with a camera as dozens of heavily armed agents piled out of vehicles and swarmed Stone's house. Some carried high-powered rifles with extra magazines hanging from military web gear. Others wore helmets, body armor, and tactical gloves. At least one agent carried two separate rifles in addition to his sidearm. The man in front of him appeared to have a flashbang grenade on his belt. The whole team scrambled over Stone's lawn and pounded on the door. Stone appeared. He was barefoot and wearing a T-shirt. The agent slapped him in handcuffs. Before they led him away to jail, Stone told the agents that his wife was upstairs with their dogs. Stone's wife is deaf and didn't understand what was happening. Stone was worried that one of the men in tactical gear might shoot her by accident. Tragedies like that regularly occur during law enforcement raids. And that's why federal agents don't raid the homes of people like Roger Stone. There's no need to. Stone has no history of violence. He doesn't run an international drug cartel. He hasn't been charged with murder or even was spying for Vladimir Putin. Roger Stone is accused of lying during the course of the Russia investigation. Under normal circumstances, during normal times, prosecutors would just call his lawyer and arrange a surrender. Stone is 66 years old. He's so broke from Mueller-related legal expenses that he can't afford health insurance. He is hardly a flight risk. But no, that's not what they did. Instead, the feds went with automatic weapons and a cameraman from CNN. You don't need to be a Roger Stone partisan, a fan, to see that there is something wrong with what happened this morning. The most powerful person in America is now an unelected prosecutor with no functional oversight over what he does. Robert Mueller commands, in effect, his own domestic army. You just saw them. He can use it however he likes, and he does. Mueller crushes people when it's not even necessary to do it, weak people mostly, and he does it in ways that are clearly designed to send a political message. That is not how democracies are supposed to work. And you'd think our media would be bothered by this. Reporters are not supposed to side with prosecutors who abuse their power or anyone else who abuses power. They are supposed to hold the powerful to account. That's why they exist, but not anymore. Now they're all on the same team. Robert Mueller is a hero to our press corps. When his agents raid the home of an elderly man charged with piddling crimes, they air the tape and they celebrate. Roger Stone, like Donald Trump, is a political con man whose showman shtick has finally caught up with him. Let me be the first to say, if you look up the word scumbag in the dictionary, you're going to see Roger Stone's picture there. I am just so damn happy this guy is indicted and arrested. <laughs> he is a horrible human being. He is, he is a yeah. thug. He is a bully. Bye-bye, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Karma is a bitch. <laughs> How would you like to have her in charge of your life? So damn happy. So a barefoot Roger Stone is taken to jail. If that thrills you, it may be time to take a break, pause, and reassess what's happened to your soul. But no one reassessed today. They rejoiced. One famous neocon summed up his feelings this way, quote, given his proclivities, maybe Roger Stone would enjoy prison. Ha! Ah, get it? Stone may get raped behind bars. How awesome is that? So how should the rest of us people who aren't spending our lives on Twitter feel about what happened this morning? Is America safer? Well, not if you believed in the Russia collusion story. We still haven't caught those villains, assuming they exist. Indeed, two years in, there is still no evidence at all that any American committed an actual crime during the 2016 election. Roger Stone, for example, stands accused of misdeeds committed long after the votes were counted. His alleged crimes arose from an investigation into other crimes we have not yet found. The charges against Stone include obstruction of proceedings, witness tampering, five counts of lying to Congress. The core of it, of the charges, is that Stone mischaracterized his conversations with the left-wing talk radio host called Randy Credico. Credico, prosecutors say, served as an intermediary with Julian Assange, who runs WikiLeaks. Now, none of what Stone or Credico did in their conversations with Assange is illegal. Journalists do that kind of thing all the time. It's the lying, we are told, that must be punished with jail time. Okay. But again, and we've noted this before, what you're looking at here is a brand new standard of conduct, one that nobody who's been paying close attention to this country for the last 20 years would even recognize. There's an awful lot of lying out there, an awful lot. A lot of it's not even acknowledged as lying. Every time an illegal immigrant lies to a federal immigration officer, that is a felony. 
Every time a politician lies under oath in the Congress, that's a potential jail term. Both of those happen a lot, but nobody is ever charged for any of it. Now, this is hardly a defense of lying. Lying is bad. It's corrosive. It's one of the main problems with our political system, actually. Everybody lies all the time. But there is at least one thing that is worse than lying, even lying under oath, and it's the selective application of federal law. One standard for the powerful and well-connected, former attorney generals, for example. Another standard for barefoot 66-year-old men with unfashionable political views. Some people skate, others are destroyed. It all depends on who you know. That's what America is becoming, and we ought to fight that.